All right, now we're on to the monster, right? Part three, let's read the whole thing. It is known that, there's that big long line there. That big long line, we're gonna have to use that, right? We don't have to prove it, but we're gonna use it. That's why they gave it to us. So the first thing I want you to do is let's write that down, write down that result. It's a bit long and awkward, but let's write the whole thing down anyway. Okay, there it is. They say, don't prove it. But then they say, all right, now we want you to work out. Now look, read the question carefully. What is the actual question asking us to work out? What kind of thing? It's an area, right? It's an area. Now, nowhere in this question does it actually tell you the method that you need to use to find out that area. But look at the area. Where is this area? I haven't actually got it on my diagram yet. Look down at the bottom of the question, or second last line actually. Where would this area go on my diagram? Hmm. Now, remember I said, common theme between one, two, three, four questions. Very, very few of us, if any of us, actually used that picture to help you do that area. You just sort of said, oh, I did part two. N Part three didn't say hence or otherwise, I will just go on my merry way as if it were independent. They're not independent. Here's negative two, roughly, right? Where's two? Somewhere over here, presumably? There's the area I've been asked to do. Can you work out that with a formula? Is there any formula for, you know that shape, right? That formula you memorized for that shape? Oh no, wait, I didn't learn any formula for that shape because it's a completely random thing. I'm going to need integration here, okay? Now, think for a moment, just put your pens down because we panicked here and we just did not know what to do. We need to form an integral, right? The question gave us a clue that doesn't have an integral in it even though I need an integral. How can you, too quick, how can you use this thing to help you find an integral? Hmm. Maybe you should go back. Go back to question 12, part A. You see question 12, part A? Question 12, part A is the same question. It's exactly the same question, it's just dressed up a little differently. In question 12 party, we held your hand. What did we tell you to do? We told you differentiate, and then you get, you get something like this. You do working like this. You differentiate something, and you get an answer at the end. And then in part 2 of 12e, we say, hence, integrate, right? And that is precisely what we can do here. You've got a derivative, you can use that to form an integral, okay? Now the integral I want doesn't have any p's in it. There's no p, so what am I gonna do? What should p actually be replaced by? It should be replaced by a half. Have a look at this guy over here. Look at it carefully. Do you see, if I put in p equals a half, then I'll get my equation. You see that? There it is. There's that half x up in the um, power, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. Here's my working. I'm gonna say, let p equal a half. Okay. Once you've done that, you're going to get, let's actually write this out, you're going to get this big awkward line. But I need this big awkward line. Are you okay with that? Do you see all I've done is a substitution? What are you going to use this for? How are you going to use it? What am I going to do to both sides? Have a look. What are you trying to find again? You're trying to find an area, so I'm going to integrate both sides, but I'm not just going to do any integral, right? I don't want an indefinite integral. In fact, I want a particular integral. Which one? I want it between negative two and two, and you can see that's why I've drawn this orange region, right? So, here we go. 
No, I'm still on blue. Okay. When I integrate the right hand side from negative 2 to 2, that's just the statement of, well, this will give me the area, right? From this with respect to x. Okay. When I do this left hand side though, my goodness, this is a bit of a mess, but I'm just going to, when you integrate a derivative, you just go back to the original thing, right? So you're just going to get that. That's the thing you're evaluating. Mm, I'm just going to write the whole thing out. OK, now, the reason I put this line here is because a lot of you got to this point, but you still didn't get the right answer out. So I want you to look carefully and remember that all four of these questions have something in common which we struggled to do when we were actually doing the paper. This answer here is not going to work out really well. What's the problem when you have a look at this area with this particular shape that will not just give you the answer just like that? What's its issue? Hmm. There's negatives and positives. If I just do this, if I just do this, right, this negative part will be treated as, I should say, this part beneath the axis will be treated as negative, right? So then it'll like cancel out with part of this over here, yeah? Does that make sense? But is that what the question actually wants us to do? It says, let R be this region. And it doesn't say treat this as negative, treat this as positive. We actually have to treat that like a positive area. So in fact, this isn't going to quite do it for me, right? In fact, what I need to do from the graph, because I interpret from the graph that there are some bits underneath that I have to deal with, I'm going to say from, now have a look at the boundaries. Which part do I want to actually reverse and turn back to positive? Where are the boundaries from where to where? Negative 2 to, oh, be careful. It's to the intercept, right? So it's negative 2 to negative 1. That's going to be this integral. I'm going to want the negative of that, right? I better finish off the actual thing. OK, so being that I've put a minus sign out the front, it'll cancel with the minus sign I get from here, and that'll give me that area, right? Yes? OK, so if you just did this, this would be OK in this case. The reason why I'm always a bit hesitant around absolute values is that I just see lots of students, they just kind of throw absolute value signs around because like, I don't know, I want these to be, I want, I want this to be positive or that one or that one. I don't really know. I'll just put absolute value signs everywhere. And then students get confused. So I would prefer you to say, I know that this, when I evaluate it, will be negative. How do I know it will be negative? Because the graph tells me it's beneath the axis. And I know how to restore that by putting a minus sign out the front. And then I know there's this other area from, look at the, the boundaries, where is it going from? It picks up where the other one left off and ends at two, which is meant to be the end of the boundary. Uh, this, da 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 da. And now this you can do with that top line there, okay? With proper boundaries and that minus sign. That will give you the answer, which I can't remember, but it's in the solutions and you can look them up, okay? So that question is hard, but it's mostly because you're intimidated by how weird the working looks. Actually, sorry, there's the answer. It's provided to you. That's how much we want you to get this solution. 